Good morning, Sofa Squad. It's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So today is the day. We all saw it coming. We knew it was coming. Much of it's not a surprise. Uh, we are talking about the verdict in the Brent Christensen trial. And I'm filming this the day after because I was on the road all day long. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of review an article here and go over some key points of it. And that's it. So without further ado, let's begin. It took jurors less than two hours to reach a verdict of guilty. Now, we all kind of knew that this was going to happen because if you remember, he pled not guilty, but then like his opening statements, not his, but you know, his attorneys were, um, he's guilty. So I think it was a move to try and basically get him off death row. And I think that we're going to see in the coming, uh, you know, d sentencing phase, them try and use that. So... But they did re they did return with guilty verdicts on all charges. And what I'm going to do right now is just read those exact charges off and kind of talk about those. Judge Jim Shadid was handed the forms that the jury you know sent in with all guilty verdicts, and this is what they said: guilty of kidnapping resulting in the death of Ms. Zhang, a visiting scholar at the University of Illinois from China. Guilty of lying to FBI by saying he slept and played video games on June 9th, 2017, the day Ms. Zong was last seen. Uh, guilty of lying to the FBI by saying that after he picked up an Asian woman, he dropped her off a few blocks away. So, you know, they got him on all these little charges. And one thing, I, I mean, and I don't know for certain, but this is my take on it, is, I mean, A, obviously he broke the law. He lied to the FBI agents. But one reason that I think they go after all these charges is to make sure if something doesn't stick, you know, at least they have these charges. Because they're like, eh, the murder's enough. We don't need to get him for the lying thing. Well, what if that fell through? You know what I'm saying? So they can get him on these other things. And then if he starts doing appeals, it's like he's going to have to peel back all the layers of this. Now, when the verdict was read, he didn't really seem to react at all, which the, the uh, reporters are saying that's pretty much how he was the whole trial with his lawyers, just kind of the stoic, you know, face. Um, and again, they go into the whole thing about it's not really a surprise to the verdicts because in the opening statements, the defense was basically like, you know, we're not going to try and argue this. He's guilty. He did this. So that's where they then go into the whole aspect of, you know, the bigger question is, is the jury going to return a death sentence? So... That's going to begin on July 8th, and they're saying that's going to last about a week. And so this is where, now remember, we haven't been able to see how this has played out in the courtroom. There have been notes where they said, oh, the defense is dragging this day out or whatever. But I'm thinking that where the defense is really going to up their game is in the sentencing phase. Because I just feel like probably the defense said to him, you're not getting out of this. There's no, you know, we can't do insanity. The evidence is too damning. I mean, this is someone who kills for killing's sake who fetishized killing, fantasized about killing, and then killed. And has pretty much, in my opinion, spit on the grave of his victim and spit on the grave of her family members. Uh, now remember that her family members are, like, they come from... Um, I forget what part of China, but they're like, they're an agricultural family. So they're farmers. They're not, you know, city folk or anything like that. So, I mean, this was a major thing for their daughter to get all the way over here and study this stuff. And then for this to happen, it's just absolutely awful. Um, and then not only for that to happen, but just his heinous behavior about it, how gloatful he was, how egotistical he was. So... Anyways, uh, let's continue to go through here. I'm going to discuss a little bit about their reaction, her family, and because they did give a statement and they read that. Um, and so what happened is after they left the courthouse, her father, Mr. Zong, uh, he read a statement in Chinese to all the reporters that were sitting there. And I'm just going to go over that. Uh, now, some of it I'm going to change a little bit because I cannot pronounce these names and I just don't want to butcher them. So I might say instead of the boyfriend's name, like the boyfriend. So, but other than that, I'm reading it as it is. On behalf of Ying Ying, our beloved daughter, and for my wife, my son, and myself, I thank the jury for this step towards justice, says Zong, who was joined by his wife, their son, and Miss Zong's boyfriend. We have missed Ying Ying tremendously in the past two years. As of today, we still could not imagine how we will live the rest of our lives without her, he said, according to a provided translation. 
There is no language that can describe our pain and suffering. We hope and believe that this trial will eventually bring justice to Ying Ying and us. Our wish has always been to find Ying Ying and bring her home. We will not give up. Now, remember, he is not told where the body is. And, you know, and I just think that it is sad as this is, you know, when they said there's no language that can describe our pain and suffering. You know, it's like, because they were reading this in, in uh, Chinese. You, know, you almost don't need a, a language, you know, the universal language of emotion, of grief, of anguish, of suffering. You know, we all recognize that. And it speaks for itself, unfortunately. And, I mean, the, her family is just beside, especially the mother. I mean, she is. But she had to sit in a separate room because she couldn't even be in the same room with this guy. I mean, it's just, it gives me goosebumps. Uh, Miss Song's mother cried into her hands through much of the statement. And as her husband finished, she began wailing in Chinese. I mean, oh my God. Uh, she said something to the effect of, I want to bring my daughter home, according to their family lawyer. Uh, during the trial, Yi watched from an uh, overflow room as the family's other attorney, Steve Beckett, said the sight of Christensen could bring tears to her eyes. Okay, so now let's just talk a little bit about Ying Ying. So she arrived in Urbana in April 2017 to study photosynthesis in corn and soybeans as a visiting scholar at the University of Illinois, uh, and she, with the hope of eventually receiving her doctorate. And uh, the father was saying, probably the perfect daughter you could dream of. And, and I mean, it sounds, it, this young lady just sounded so, I mean, look at what she did with her life at such a young age. Uh, she is from a rural area in China. She went to an average elementary school, and then she went to probably like number four, number five middle school. And then she went to the number one high school in her region, he said. She went on to a very prestigious university in China, and then did her master's degree in the so-called number one university, Peking University in China. He said she was working very hard towards her dreams. Also, she has been a very nice daughter to her parents. She always shared with them her life stories and where she is, Wong said. Losing someone like that is so hard on the family. The issue, in the statement issued by the attorney and Wong, uh, they say that they have been traumatized by the loss of Ying Ying, by the delays in the case against the person who murdered Ying Ying, and by the testimony they heard during the trial. They said, their emotional distress has been at times unbearable, and the jury's verdict of guilty in this case is a step towards justice for Ying Ying and a step toward closure for Ying Ying's family. And it's so true. I mean, I can't imagine dealing, listening to that. It, I mean, I just can't imagine. I absolutely can't imagine. They are very thankful to Tara Bullis, the girlfriend, for coming forward and doing what she did. Uh, Tara's courage is self-evident, and the assistance she gave to law enforcement was invaluable. Uh, and they recognized Christensen's lawyers. We recognize that the defense lawyers had a difficult task in the case. We appreciate the respect they have shown the family. Now, the family has asked the prosecutors to... They want the death penalty. Can't say it. I blame them. Also, you know, they said, we'll leave that to the jury. We think that the trial, the process eventually is going to bring justice for Ying Ying and the Zong family. So, and again, these are the attorneys speaking. Now, this is a little bit of information that I didn't get in the other stuff, so I just kind of want to say, go over this. Okay, if you remember from my other videos, when I was saying that when the wife got up there and testified, and she was like, oh, he said something in 2016, and our marriage was never the same after that. And I was like, what did he say? What did he say? So in here they tell us. And it says, December 2016, Christensen told his wife after a night of drinking about his interest in serial killers, according to a video played during the trial. See, this is the tricky thing when these trials don't have this, because one reporter makes note of this, and one reporter makes note of that. But there's little things, so you almost have to go through each thing and get out what you want of it. And somebody, I mean, like that right there, I figured it was something along that flavor. Like, you know, what are you going to say that completely changes the marriage? And he probably went into even more detail about it because clearly he had, you know, um, a major interest in this. Now, one more thing I do want to say in here in this article is it talks about the defense. And it says in the closing argument, and it was a 10-minute closing argument. I mean, I, I just truly believe the defense with this was like, look, we're done. The federal defender, Elizabeth Pollack, said there was not much to dispute and that the evidence showed that Christensen killed Masong. 
it's Brent's fault, she said. I expect that you will find him guilty. So, y'all, I mean, they, they knew. Like, I mean, they knew. They were like, he's guilty. We're admitting this. Um, and so I just really think they're going to try to take the level of, weren't we good people? We, you know, we said that he did it or something of that flavor. So, anyways, I just wanted to update everybody here on the, the verdict and some of the little keynotes here. Uh, I hope the Sova Squad is doing well when you see this. Um, if you want to follow me on social media and hang out with me on Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, um, what else do we have? Instagram, uh, Discord, you name it. It's all there in the description. Check it out, and we will be back soon with another video. Hasta la vista.